now welded plate girder uh, we are using when we have less span large load means bending moment is more or larger span less load bending moment is more in that case we prefer welded plate girder now why we will prefer welded plate girder in this case because when we have z required that is greater than z available so z available we have iswb 600 and if z required is greater than the z of iswb 600 then we have to go for built up section now built up section means what built up section means beams with plate on compression and tension flange now if our requirement z requirement is larger then we have to add number of plates on compression and tension flange and in that case self weight of the beam goes on increasing and which will not be economical but if we will go for welded plate girder in this case we are going to keep flange plates away from the neutral axis as you go away from the neutral axis your moment of inertia increases very fast because we have i is equal to bd cube by 12 plus a into h square and as we have h square so our value increases fast where h is the distance between the center of the flange plate to the neutral axis and as we increase this then second term a h square increases very fast and as i increases z increases and we have md is directly proportional to zp and therefore your zp as your zp increases fast so automatically your md also increases fast when we will go away from the or when your flange plates are away from the neutral axis and therefore we will prefer plate girder when we have large bending moment now what are the components of the welded plate girder so we have main components of the welded plate girder so first you can see we have flange plates so this is uh, compression flange plate we if we have gravity loads and this is tension flange plate then we have web plate so web plate we have throughout the span that is between the compression and tension flange we have web plate then we have end bearing stiffener so these end bearing stiffeners we are going to provide that is at reactions or when we have uh large reactions then these end bearing stiffeners are uh, provided so which will be other than your vertical stiffeners so now we have next that is vertical stiffeners you can see that is uh, whole line which is this black line and this dotted line both these are vertical stiffeners now this stiffener is on uh, front side of this uh, plate girder and this which is dotted one this is back side of this web plate and therefore we have plotted it as dotted so sometimes we have to provide alternate one on one side other on other side and in some cases we have to provide on both the sides depending upon the requirement of the plate girder or design of the plate girder now we will go with one problem that is design a welded plate girder and we have span 30 meter Dead load twenty kilo newton per meter. Superimpose the twelve kilo newton per meter, and a concentrated load is there, which is at center, and that is two fifty kilo newton. And then we, you can see this. We have compression flange, and that compression flange that is laterally supported. And then we have to go M D is equal to beta B Z P F Y upon gamma M O. So that we have already seen flexural members. and uh, fe 415 is given now steps if you will see we have uh, steps uh, are like flexural members you can see this so first we have load calculation so we have to factor it we have to find factored load that is uh, dead load superimposed load and concentrated load and then we have by using this total load we have to find self weight now you can see this we have total factored load 1815 kN And self weight actually this varies from two hundred to three hundred. 
300 we are going to take for roll section 250 generally for built up beams and 200 we are using for plate girders so that is total load upon 200 and we are going to get this value which is 9.08 kN per meter we are assuming it as 9 kN per meter now this is uh, this value we are going to assume so we can go a little bit uh, lower side and we can round up it as 9 if anyone want can go for 9.1 kN per meter now once we know self weight we know udl due to dead load superimposed load we will add this self weight in this and then again we will go for factor dead load so you can see this total udl on the girder so this is working when and by multiplying by 1.5 we are going to get factor uh, udl on the plate girder now we have uh, Concentrated load which is acting at center that is 250. We have to make factor it by multiplying one point by 1.5, which will give me 375 kN. So knowing these value, the knowing these factor it values of the loads, we will go for second step, which is shear force and uh, bending moment diagram. So we will show this uh, load that is on the Girder, so you can see over here for SFD BMD calculations, we have this as loading diagram. So we have 375 at center, 15 meter, 15 meter, UDL 61.5 kilonewton per meter, concentrated load 375 kilonewton. These are factor rate load. Now we will find reaction as my welded plate girder is symmetrical or loading on the welded plate girder is symmetrical. So my reactions are half on left, half on right. So I directly divided it by 2 and I got the value as 1110 kN which will be my reaction on both sides. Now I will plot SFD. Now you are well known with SFD so I will not go in detail with this one. So reaction so that is 1110. So we are going to subtract 61.5 into 15 from 1110 gives me plus 80 187.5 we will subtract minus 375 gives me minus 187.5. Now load on right side of 375 is again downward. So we can go minus 61.5 into 15. Already we have minus 187.5. So adding this, we are going to get value that is again 1110. And then we will uh, subtract, we will sub add plus 1110, which will be our right side reaction, gives me value as zero. Now for bending moment, we can go uh, by finding bending moment that is reaction into 15 meter minus 61.5 square by 2. From this, I will get bending moment, which will be 9731.25 kN meter. Or I can use formula, which we have for UDL WL square by 8 and for concentrated load WL by 4. Because in this case, my beam is simply supported so we have to use formulas of simply supported gives me bending moment diagram having maximum value at center 9731.25 kN meter so now once we know this value then we are going to design the welded plate girder we are going to decide the dimensions of the welded plate girder and we will check whatever dimensions we have provided for welded plate girder are sufficient to resist the bending moment coming on it now, in this case, we have to go for this minimum web thickness and the thickness of the web in sections and satisfy the following requirement. This is given in clause number 8.6 IS 800 2007. Now, different criteria are given. So, we have first that is if my no stiffeners are there, D by TW less than or equal to 87, sorry, 67 epsilon, then in that case, we have to go only for we need not require to provide any stiffness. Now, if it is above 67, then we have to go for uh, horizontal stiffness. Now, you can see this, that is transverse stiffness. So, when your value that ranges between 67 to 250, we have to go for this transverse stiffness. So, from 67 to 200, we will go with uh, only vertical stiffness then when it is between 200 to 250 then we will go with one longitudinal stiffener which will be at two fifth uh, from the uh, neutral axis so two fifth of d by two or i can say 0.2 into d from compression flange and then we can have next if d by tw greater than 250 less than 
400, then we are going to be another longitudinal stiffener which will be located at neutral X. And this in detail we have explained over here. So D by TW less than or equal to 67, no stiffeners. Between 67 to 200, we have only vertical stiffeners. Between uh, 200 to 250, then we have along with vertical stiffeners, we have to provide uh, longitudinal stiffener which will be at point 2D from top compression flange. And uh, if it is between 250 to 400, then we have vertical stiffeners, then we have first stiffener which will be at so this we can say 0.5D from top flange and sorry this is at 0.2D not 0.4D so this is 0.2D from top compression flange and then another we are going to provide at neutral axis when our value of d, d by tw is between 250 to 400. If it is d by tw greater than 400, then we have to change the sections. So accordingly, we have to decide the dimensions of the web plate. So now different formulas are given or you can directly assume depth of web plate by experience also. So here I have used formula that is d is equal to mk upon fy to the power 1 by 3. Now in this one, M we know, F Y we know, then we have to decide value of K. Now K we have D by TW. Now if we have only vertical stiffness, then our value should be between 150 to, uh, sorry, 67 to 200. So here we will assume value as 150 considering we have only vertical stiffness. So we have assumed this value as 150 and by substituting these values, we are going to get value of D, which will be 1800.69 millimeters. So I will provide depth of web plate as 1800 millimeters. So now knowing the depth of web plate, we are in position to calculate thickness of web plate, which we got as 12 millimeters. So now our web plate dimensions are finalized, which are 12, 18 millimeters. Now we will switch out to the next, which are dimensions of flat plate. Now, once I know, uh, dimensions of web plate, then I can go for uh, dimensions of flange plate by using MD is equal to beta B ZP FI upon gamma MO. As you remember in compression members, we have modified formula to uh, select the section and in the same way, here also we are going to modify formula a little and uh, we are going to derive a formula to uh, determine value of ZP required. Now you can have this table number two and there already we know that for your plastic, for your compact, your value of beta B is equal to one. And if we have semi-compact section, then we have beta B that is equal to ZE upon ZP. So MD becomes ZE FY upon gamma MO. Here we are going to say that our section is plastic section or compact section and by considering this we are going to assume that value of beta b that is equal to 1. Now uh, in design generally uh, flanges are going to resist bending moment and web plate is going to resist shear. So here we are assuming that assumption that uh, total bending moment that was resisted by your flange plates and formula now we are going to get this formula that is equal to ZP is equal to AF into D by 2 into 2 and that we are going to say that is equal to ZP we have taken so I can write over here that is gamma MO into MD. So now instead of MD I will write it as M and divided by FY. So by using this formula we can find value of AF. Now how, how we will get this? So ZP, we are going to take moment of these flange plates about neutral axis. So now AF, that is area of the flange plates and we are going to multiply distance between center of flange plate to the neutral axis. But as we do not know thickness of this flange plate, so we are going to neglect that and we are taking directly D by 2. And uh, two times because we have flange plates on both sides. And from this, I will get ZP equal to AF into D and that just I mentioned this. This I can go instead of MD, I will say it as M, gamma MO 
upon f y and then i will substitute these values so this is again we are m only and then we are going to substitute these values and by substituting these values we are going to get value of af and then we have this value 2378.5 mm square now knowing af we are going to assume the value of width that is 0.3d and this value comes 540 mm but we will provide little bit higher side and then we will consider this as 600 mm so we will provide width of flange that is equal to 600 mm now we have to check this criteria that my value of bf upon tf that should be less than or equal to 2 into 8.4 so that is uh, 8.4 or you can see this directly bf that should be less than tf and that is less than or equal to so here i have taken this bf that is 2b and then i will get it as 16.8 and that actually we have to see and we will get this and we have tf that is 40 and if we will divide 600 by 40 then we will get this value as 15 which is less than 16.8 so our this criteria will be satisfied and therefore we are going to provide this flange plates as 600 mm by 440 mm so now our dimensions are fixed we have web plate 1800 by 12 and we have flange plates 600 by 40 so you can see this we have shown this cross section of this uh, plate girder and we have 600 by 40 flanges and then 1800 by 12 as web plate now we have this section and we will see the capacity of this section so we are going to find out md and for that we have to find out zp so as we have already seen zp we are going to get this bf now we are going to consider both flange and web so we have bf into tf and then we have to consider the distance from center of this plate to the neutral axis and we are going to get this as bf tf into d minus t by 2 just i have explained this into 2 plus we have to consider of this tw so we are going to be with center so we have two times tw into d by 2 into from center t d by 4 and this will be twice and that will gives me value of zp that is equal to 53.88 into 10 days to 6 and this we have unit uh, for zp we have this as millimeter cube so knowing these values we can go with uh, uh, md so here some books they have used zp as 1.2 z you can use it but you are on higher side for this value so it is always better to go with exact values and then we will substitute this value of zp in this equation and then from this we will get this value as 12245.45 kN meter this is already i explained this we have 600 or you can take uh, 600 by 2 300 divided by 40 and that you are going to get this value as uh, 30 by 4 and that is again less than 8.4 so this comes 7.5 that is 15 already we have seen on in last slide and as my md is 1224.45 kN meter greater than 9731.25 kN meter so this is okay for resisting moment now we will check its shear capacity now we are on page 60 that is vcr is av into tau b and tau b we have these three criteria which depends upon value of lambda w now how we will calculate lambda w value so we have this formula which depends on tau cr now how we will calculate tau cr so we have this formula k into pi square e upon 12 1 minus mu square d by t w whole square so knowing from this tau cr we will substitute in lambda w from lambda w we are going to find out tau b and then we are going to substitute tau b in this so av into tau b that we will get value as vcr and if my value of vcr greater than the reaction then we need not require to check for end panels that is given in one of the book now we will go for shear resistance now i just explained you so we are going to put it now while putting this we have to go for kv and this kv are given 
different criteria so depending upon your c by d value now here we are assuming c by d as 1.2 you can assume this value between 1 to 1.5 generally so we have assumed this as 1.2 and by substituting this c by d 1.2 we will calculate value of c now what is c c is the distance center to center distance between the vertical stiffness and this c we can exactly calculate over here that is c is equal to 1.2 into d and by considering this d we know which is 1800 and from this we are in position to calculate value of uh, c which will be 2160 mm now knowing value of c we will provide it on higher side let us it it will be 2200 mm now knowing value of c knowing value of d i have to calculate actual value of c by d and that value we got as 1.22 now knowing value of c by d we will find value of kv which gives me as 8.04 now we will substitute value of uh, 8.04 in equation of tau cr and then we are going to get from this 119.96 now in tau cr we will calculate lambda w and that will gives me value as 1.1 which is less than 1.2 and therefore we have to use tau b this formula now substitute values in this equation we know lambda w which will be 1.1 and fy w already we know that will be 410 and substituting these values we are going to get tau b as 109.70 mpa from this you can calculate value of v and which will, which will be 1579.63 kN which is greater than reaction 1110 kN so just i mention it therefore end panel need not be checked for tension field action as my vn is greater than your uh, reactions now after this we have to go for connection of flank plate to web plate now here we have maximum shear force 1110 kN we have udl on top 61.5 kN per meter we have to find out horizontal shear between flange plate and web plate so we have these dimensions and that is uh, 12 mm web then 600 we have bf 40 tf then 1800 d and from this we are going to find out value of tau tau is equal to va y bar upon ib now we will little bit modify this which will gives me tau h is equal to tau into b is equal to va bar upon va y bar upon i b we have taken on left side and then that we will made as tau h so if we will as we are taking this on this side so i am going to get this value directly in newton millimeter or you can say kilo newton meter both will be same so we have newton mil per millimeter or we have kilo newton per meter so kilo newton per meter we have to keep because we have udl in this same way also this is also kilo newton per meter or newton per millimeter so now from this we are in position to find out value of tau h so we know 600 into 40 and till center we have this is 900 and center of this uh, flange 20 so 920 and that will gives me value of tau h as 527.07 newton per millimeter or kilo newton per meter and then we will substitute these values in the equation of tau r which will gives me value as 530.65 newton per millimeter and then we have to provide weld to resist this uh, shear per millimeter so now as we have plank plate 40 millimeter so we will assume the weld size as 10 millimeter and now here we have to check this time mention this we have to provide weld to resist this shear now assume weld length 150 mm this we have to assume minimum we have to go for 40 mm now weld strength formula already we know we have studied this connections and there we have all this now we why we have taken as tau r into p that i will explain later and from this substituting all this value i got value of p as 381.03 mm now provide alternately 10 mm weld of 150 mm length at a spacing of 350 mm center to center now you can see we have this so we are going to provide these welds so we are going to consider Pitch, which will be my distance between center to center. So now we have this SP, that is pitch of weld. Now this force will be registered. The force developed in this pitch will be registered by this welding, 
and this welding. So we have total half weld down this side, which will be 75 millimeter, and half of this will be 75 millimeter. So we have taken this length as 150 millimeter. Half half of these welds. Now this shear force I have to find out. What will be this shear force? So we know tau value. We have width, this will be B. And we have this, this already I mentioned as B. And so it becomes shear force. So I can write shear force. And that is equal to tau into B into P. But we have already mentioned tau into B is tau H. And therefore, I can write it as tau in tau H into P. And this shear force will be registered by the weld provided. And therefore, so this is uh, shear force. So here we have now vertical load also, that is UDL also. So we have made it as tau R into P. And tau R, this will be force that will be over here. So now we have this will be 150, 150 and then we have 350 millimeters and that will gives me 200 millimeter clear spacing between the welds. So now curtailment of plank plate. This is also most important part. Now why, when we will go for curtailment? So when uh, we have that bending moment decreases fast towards the support and in most of the cases we have this condition. And therefore, we always provide curtailment so that my section becomes economical section. As bending moment reduces, so requirement of flange plate also redu reduces towards the support. Now, how we will decide minimum thickness required at the support? So as again, we have to go to table two. From that, we are going to decide the minimum thickness. <coughs> so we have this will be the formula already we know. Now I will not explain this. So we have this will be BF minus TW upon two into 13.6 that already I mentioned this one. So considering we as uh, plastic section and we can reduce thickness till 24 mm only because we got this by using table as 21.62. So we have to keep more than this one. So 22 we will not go, we will prefer 24 millimeters. And now you can see from this I will get a section that section we are going to get as semi-compact section. And in case of semi-compact, we have beta B equal to ZE upon ZP. And now if we will substitute this, then our formula becomes ZE FY upon gamma. I'm already I mentioned for plastic and compact, we have beta B1. And for semi-compact, we have beta B as ZE upon ZP. So now uh, we have from this, we are going to calculate value of ZE. And by knowing ZE, we can find MD value. So we have this MD that is equal to 7327.27 kilonewton meter. And this is for the plate girder section having flange thickness of 24 millimeter. You can see over here. And then we are going to find out where we will have this bending moment 7327.27 in beams. And here you can see we have considered section XX. So we have over here section XX we will consider and we will take this as a reaction. So we have 1110 into X minus 61.5 X square by 2 equal to 7327.27 and from this I got value of X as 8.7 meter from both suppose and then we are going to cartel uh, plange thickness from 40 to 24, that is on both sides, that is at end 8.7 meter. Now you can see over here, but we cannot directly cut it from 40 to 25, 24. So we are going to provide a slope and that slope we have to provide as one in five. And this will gives you curtailment. So this will be, so if I will say this 8.7, so this is my, actual point of cutoff. So we have this as 8.7 actually, which will be actual point of cutoff, sorry, theoretical point of cutoff. And this, after your connection, we are going to get, this will be 
practical point of cutoff that is actual we are going to be at this point theoretical we are going to be at this point so 8.7 meter this will be tpc theoretical point of cutoff and this point i am going to show this is actual point of cutoff so we have to subtract length of connection from this 8.7 meter and that will be the distance from your support so we have this bending moment diagram that it reduces so we are going to provide this curtailment so this is all about your uh, welded plate girders so in this welded plate girders we have not considered uh, connection that is stiffness because otherwise then lecture will be again lengthy so that part we will go with uh, another lecture thank you